Hello, welcome to Products of London Fan TV. Ali here, bringing you my match review of the game at the Etihad between Manchester City and Crystal Palace, which of course finished 4-0 to Man City in another thrilling encounter. Before we get into that, a reminder that I have an interview on my channel with Robbie Lyle from Arsenal Fan TV from Thursday night when we played Arsenal. He gave his views on the game, the situation with Ozil and Arteta, and of course his views on Palace as well. Check it out on the channel if you haven't done so. Let's get straight into my usual features. I'm going to start with Roy's rating and I'm going to give Roy a 6 out of 10. I'm not going to go too harsh on Roy tonight. Some fans on social media are doing the usual Roy out and I've been critical of Roy in the past but I don't really feel we had a lot to work with today against one of the best teams in Europe. No Sahar of course and when we heard that your heart drop straight away and you kind of get that sense that we aren't going to have one of those nights or days like we've had under Roy before against one of the top teams like that day at the Etihad a couple of years ago or at Old Trafford earlier in the season. Um, it's like, you know, it's like Sky Sports not having a Liverpool pundit. The whole essence of your, our organisation is just gone. Um, let's have a look, though. There's a couple of things where I'm not quite happy with Roy. I would have had Gyro Riddlewell to start in the central midfield. I think a central midfield of Milivojevic, MacArthur and McCarthy is just too similar. I think Riddlewell would have brought something different, an eye for a pass. Having those three in the midfield is like having a three-course meal with garlic bread to start, garlic bread for main and garlic bread for dessert, except the quality of garlic bread isn't even that good. It's, more, it's not M&S garlic bread. It's more like garlic bread from the Sainsbury's behind our ground. Uh, I think Riddlewell would have brought something else. He would have been defensive-minded, but still given us some sort of release, some sort of outlet, some sort of eye for a pass or creativity through that middle. And the other problem I think that we had was that when we did get it up there, there was just no threat on goal. Jordan Ayew up front, he's not replicated that form from last season. I can again kind of get why Roy went for Jordan Ayew. We had to press high against a team like Man City, who are so good on the ball. And Jordan Ayew is good at that. He does harass. But just we were so blunt up front and proven by the fact that we had no shots on target. So the other one really that I think we missed as well, as part from Saha, is Jeffrey Schlupp. And I always say about Jeffrey Schlupp, I've said it on my videos before, that you, he is a player you really appreciate when he's not in the team. He's so central and fundamental to our system and our counter-attacking play is so much less effective without him in the team. We just find it harder to break. And no Saha, no Schlupp, really, to sum up for me, did mean really that even if Roy had made those changes that I talked about, we probably still would have lost the game by a couple of goals. So I think this is one we've got to dust ourselves off and move on. You've got to kind of think, do we need to dip in the market with Max Meyer leaving and Jeffrey Schlupp with a considerable injury? Could we dip into the transfer market for a wide player? I'm not expecting us to, to be honest with you. Yannick Balassi, anyone? Um, there will be rumours, there will be whispers about Saha not being in the team, of course, because of him not playing, that he might be moving. But I do think he had an injury. I did say on Arsenal Fan TV to Robbie the other night that I felt the last 20 minutes, Wilf was carrying a knock. He wasn't quite at full tilt. So I wasn't actually that surprised when he wasn't named in the lineup tonight. But there will be some whispers. The, the one that keeps reappearing is PSG. Pochettini, we know, wanted him, well, allegedly wanted him at Spurs, and now he's got more money to play around with. But I still expect him to be here in February. I just think teams have not got the money they usually have, although PSG might be one of those ones who differ from that. But because of the no match day revenue for almost a year now, it almost feels like there isn't a transfer window. So, um, as always, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. What do you think? Where do we go from here? We've got West Ham in nine days. Hopefully we can get Saha and Kiate back. Do we need to dip into the transfer market? What do you think on Man of the Match today? I don't really have a Man of the Match today. I'd give it to Kevin De Bruyne, to be honest. First time I've never given a Man of the Match to a Palace player. I just can't think of someone today. I've given it to the assistant, Ray Lewison, before, before his enthusiasm. But no one really catching my eye for Palace today. If you disagree, you think a Palace player deserved a Man of the Match, Leave your comments in the comments below. And as again, a reminder, check it out. If it's the video coming up after this one, my interview with Robbie Lyle from Arsenal Fan TV on, that I took place on Thursday after our game of Arsenal. Check that one out. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, press that subscribe button. 
And I'll see you again soon. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully after a more entertaining game.